Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 195. Problem as you can see is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says, I invested equal amount of money. I invested equal amounts in two different accounts, A and B. This is very similar setup to what we encountered in problem number 183. Problem number 183 and 195, you will see that they're very similar. Ignore these numbers for the time being. These problems deal with the notion of time and distance. We're not doing time and distance here. This is something different, obviously, which is why there's a gap here. I left these numbers on the blackboard because we're going to do two more problems dealing with time and distance. As soon as we finish this one, 196 and 197, that's what they're there. But for the time being, just ignore these numbers. This one, as I said, is similar to 183. So we have two different accounts, A and B. And we're investing, we are told, equal amount of money in both accounts. Account A, we are told, pays 8% interest. And over a course of a period, over a course of a period, and we're not told, we're not told how long of a period that is, it's just a period. We don't know how long that period is. Over a course of a period, the amount of interest earned, we are told, exceeded the original investment by $200. The actual amount of interest we earned was actually more than the amount that we actually invested. So if we invested $10,000, the amount of interest that we earned over the course of a period is $10,200. If we invested $3,000, the amount of interest we earned over the course of a period is $3,200. You get the idea. The amount of interest earned exceeded the amount of investment by $200. In the second scenario, in account B, we are told we earn only 4%. Not only we earn half the rate of interest, but money was left in the account B for only third, but for only third, for only third the amount of time. So if you left the money in this account for six years, money was left in account B for only two years. If you left the amount of money in account A for 15 years, in account B, you left it for only five years. You get the idea. So it pays half the interest and we left the amount of money in this account for only third of the time period. As a result, here the interest earned was actually $800 less than the amount invested. So if it turns out that we invested $3,000, then the amount of interest that we earned here would, would have been $2,200, $800 less than the amount of money invested. If we, left, if we put, them, if, if, if we put uh, say $5,000, then we earned only $4,200. The question is very simple. How much did I invest? It's a long problem as you can see it occupied the whole blackboard. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds for you to be able to absorb it and get a, have an unobstructed view of the problem and then I'm going to erase it. Okay? And we'll do it together. If you want to try it yourself first, go ahead and do it. Pause the video, solve the problem and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Particularly, if you have already watched 183, this should be very, fami very familiar. All right, let's get going. First thing first, first thing we have to do, as always, is to define our variables, variables that we can employ in our work. So let's do that, shall we? Here's our solution. So first thing first, how much do you want to invest in this two account? It has to be equal amount. What do you want to invest? Let, let the amount of investment, let the amount of investment in in each of these accounts, not the total investment, but in each of the account, each of these accounts be D dollars, D for dollar, do you understand? And let, and how long do you want to invest? In this one, in account B, it's going to be third of the amount of time. So we have to figure out, we have to define how long you want to invest in account A. Let, let us involve, let us invest for, let us invest for t years, t years in A. We need the room, of course, we're going to resource part also now. So we're investing for t years in account A, we're investing d dollars, and we're getting 8%. So 8% on $1 will earn 8 over 100, on $100 it will be 8 over 100 times 100. Since we're investing d dollars, it's going to be 8 over 100 times D, this is the amount of interest we earn in one year. 
If we invest for two years, we learn twice the amount. If we invest for five years, we learn five times the amount in interest. If we earn for if we invest for three years, the amount of interest that we earn is this much. And this amount of interest that we earned, we are told, happens to be this amount, happens to be two hundred dollars more than the actual amount of investment. So how do we represent that? Here's the actual amount of investment D. Can we put an equal sign here? If you put an equal sign right here, just like this, this says that the amount of interest that we earn is equal to the amount of investment. That is not the case. This amount, this amount is $200 more than the amount of investment. So we have to subtract $200 from it in order for us to justify, in order for us to justify putting an equal sign. That's our first equation. That's our first equation. Do you understand? Let's move on then. Let's move on. Let's go. To, let's work on the second investment. Should we continue down here or should we do up here? Let's continue down here. Again, very simple. We are earning four percent interest. Four percent interest. So this is the amount of interest we'll earn in uh, on one dollar. This is account B. In one dollar, we'll earn four over one hundred. If we invest one hundred dollars, it's going to be four over one hundred times one hundred. One hundred is going to cancel out, and of course, we earn four dollars on a hundred dollars investment in one year. We're not investing. One dollar, we're not investing one hundred dollars, we're investing D dollars. D dollars. So this is how much this is how much we earn in one year. How long of a period are we investing? We're investing for we are told are we investing for two years? The answer is no. We are not investing for two years, we're investing for the third of the amount of time. So how many years we invested here? This is the account A. How many year, years have we invested here? You can invest for a third of the amount of time. As a result, this amount of interest that we are earning, this amount of interest that we are earning here, we are told, is eight hundred dollars less than the amount of investment. The amount of investment is D. How can we put? How can you justify putting equal sign here? The amount of interest that we earn here is not equal to the amount of investment. This amount is eight hundred dollars less than that amount. So, if you were to if you were to add eight hundred to it, now it will be fine. There you go. This equation equals to D, second equation equals to D, which means we can equate these two quantities. It's totally new top. So that means 8 times 100, 8 times over 100 times D times T minus 200 must equal 4 over 100 times D times t over 100, t over 3 plus 800. We are done with this thing, we are going to get rid of it. We are going to get rid of it. Let's write this thing so it is not so, not so cumbersome. Let's, let's put everything together here. So here we have 8 dt over 100 equals 4 times d times t, 4 dt over 100 times 3 is 300 and let's bring this, let's bring this 2000, 200 over there so it becomes a thousand. 200 over there, 800 plus 200, if you were to add, add 200 to both sides, this 200 drops out. Here we have a denominator of 300, here we have a denominator of 100, here we have a denominator of 1, that won't do. Let's make everybody, let's have everybody a denominator of 300. How can we do that? Well, it's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply, uh, multiply it by 3 over 3. Now it has a denominator of 100 times 3, which is same as 300. We need 300 here, so let's multiply this quantity by 300 over 300. Now, everybody has the same denominator, we have a common denominator, Nobody has a right to brag about it. Look at me, I have a denominator 300, well, so do I. Shut up. Do you understand? Which means the denominator ceases to play any significance, ceases to play any role. Denominator ceases to have any, ceases to have any significance. We can ignore the bloody thing. 8 times 3 is 24. We get 24 dt equals 4 dt plus 
100 times 300 which was it 1000 it was 1000 1000 times 300 bring the 4 dt here so we end up finding 20 dt is equal to 1000 times 300 divide both sides by 20 20 is going to go away drop the zeros and 200 is going to become 50 5 times 3 is 15 and we have how many zeros do we have? let's do it in a different color Zero, zero, zero. We have three zeros. Fifteen thousand. D times T is equal to fifteen thousand. Now, where is that going to take us? I do not know. I do not know. Well, let's let's put it back in the. Let's go back to the original equation, shall we? Let's go back to the original equation, shall we? The original equation tells us, and by original equation I mean either equation one or two. It doesn't matter. Either equation one or two. So I'm going to use the one that is actually simpler. Which, which equation was simpler? I'm going to stick with first equation because the first equation is the period of t, t years. Second equation is t over 3, a third of the time. And uh, therefore it's going to be complicated. We're going to end up with a 3 at the bottom. Let's work on the first equation. First equation, we need the room. So we're going to continue here. That's it. That's, that's what we have. We need the room, obviously. So I have to get rid of it. I'll give you a second. So this part is gone. Right here is the first equation actually. The first equation told us that we were earning 8%, 8% interest on D dollars for T amount period. And that amount, that amount was $200 more than the actual amount of investment. Well, we know what D times T is. D times T is 15,000. We can put it in there. You know, the D times T, D times T is 15,000 from here. Let's put it in here. So we get 8 over 100 times D times T, which is 15,000 right here, minus 200 equals D. Because the question was, how much did we invest in each account? The question was, how much did we invest in each account? And the way we set it up is, we define our variable D to be the amount of money that we invested in each account. So as soon as we find the value of D, we're done with the bloody thing. Do you understand? So, let's divide top and bottom by 100. 100 is going to go away and two zeros are going to go away. 8 times, oh there we go, we're done. 8 times 1500 minus 200. This is a very strange number. I hope and pray to God that uh, I did not make a boo-boo. Do you think that I made a boo-boo? I don't know. We need the room, obviously. We need the room. And if we did make a mistake, if we did make a boo-boo, we'll find out when we do our verification. Won't we? 15 times 8. 15 times 8. I should know my 15 table, but I do not. So that's 40, 4, and 120. Because of course it makes sense because 15 times 8 is same as 10 15s minus a 30 because 30 is 2 15s. 10 15s is 150, 150 minus 30 is 120. So that's 120. And then we have a 0. Don't forget we have a 0 here. So it's 120 with two zeros. This is not making any sense. Something has gone drastically wrong. One fifty times six eight. One fifty times eight should be oh one fifty times eight should not be twelve thousand, it should be twelve hundred is one twenty and then we stick one more zero that is here, so it should be twelve hundred. It should be twelve hundred. That makes sense now because I know what the answer is. 1200 minus 2, probably because I made the problem, do you understand? 1200 minus 2, 200 is 1000. So the amount of money that we invested, it turns out, is exactly $1000 in each account. 
the amount of money that we invested is exactly one thousand dollars. Let's do the verification. Let's do the verification. Well, if we invested one thousand dollars, we are claiming that we invested one thousand dollars in each of these accounts. If we invested one thousand dollars in, in in each account, then well, here's what happens: one thousand dollars at eight percent. If you invest one thousand dollars at eight percent, that will yield eighty dollars per year. Eighty dollars per year. And the problem tells us tells us that we earned we earned twelve hundred dollars in interest. Remember in account A, remember in account A, the amount of interest that we earned was actually two hundred dollars more than what we actually invested in the account. So we, we earn $1,200. The rate at which we are earning the interest is $80. $80 per year. How long does it take to earn $1,200? Let's find out, shall we? $1,200 total amount that we have earned divided by the amount of money that we earn in one year, which is $80. This is the dollar amount in per year, and this is the dollar amount. So dollars are going to cancel out, and year is going to end up in the top. Zeros are going to cancel out. And we have to divide 120 by 8. 120 by 8 right here. 120 divided by 8 is going to be 15. So that implies that we must have invested for 15 years. The amount of money that we invested in A, this is account A. The amount of money that we invested in account A must have been for 15 years. If our answer is correct, if this is $1,000 is correct, then we do the account number B, everything should fit together. Now remember, in account B, what we were told is that we earn $800 less in interest than the amount of investment. So let's see what happens. So here's our account B. So if we invested for 15 years in account A, if we invested 15 years in account A, then account B, we invested T over 3, T over 3, one third of the amount of time, or 5 years at 4%. And what we're claiming is that we, are, we have invested $1,000. $1,000 $1,000 yields $40 per year. $1,000 earns $40 per year at 4%. We're not, invested, we're not investing for one year, we're investing for five years. One third of the amount of time. T over T is five years. Which means that this implies that we will earn, we should, we should have earned, we should earn 40 times 5 or $200 in interest. We should earn $200 in interest in account B. I'm going to erase all of this thing. we put a demarcation. We, must, we should earn $200 in interest in account B, which is exactly what the problem told us. The problem told us that the amount of interest that we earned in account B was $800 less than the amount of investment. Our, our amount of investment must have been $1,000 because $800 less than $1,000 is $200, which is exactly, it turns out, that we are earning because we are earning only 4% on $1,000. 4% on $1,000 is $40 per year for a third of the amount of period, which is five years, $40 in one year, therefore 40 times five or $200 in five years, which happens to be $800 less than the amount of investment we made. Amen. That's a lot of talking. Bye now.